Uh, if you are visiting us, especially welcome. And if you would like to stay in touch, there's a, um, a what do you call it? A sign in book? What is that thing yes, called? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, book. <laughs> uh, out in the atrium that you can sign in. You can leave us your email address if you'd like to sign up for our Friday e blast. We also have a web page and we're on the social media and all the stuff. So you can keep in touch with us. We can keep in touch with you. Uh, it is. The, if you're visiting, this is the best Sunday all year to be here. <laughs> this is Sunday, Sunday. So we had a priest, Father Lovett, who was a big fan of ice cream Sundays, and today we are celebrating Father Lovett and a significant gift that he left for us. Um, he set up a foundation that we use to make grants to the community for community good. And so once a year we celebrate Father Lovett with Sunday, Sunday. You're here for Sunday, Sunday. That is coffee hour right after the church service. And then come back next Saturday, more food and a really important event, but food. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like a dog. Food <laughs> uh, Come back next Saturday, August 10th, 11 o'clock. We're celebrating our new priest father chips ministry with us, and there's a reception to follow. That will be a very happy, happy day for St. Philip's. 
Uh, the Benzie Area Pride Network, a mission of St. Philip's, has a beach day on August 18th. I'm still trying to figure out what beach to go to. And we have a queer clothing swap on August 24th. If you can donate gently used clothes, um, I've started collecting stuff in that first room down the hall here, the one that's closest to hand, all those kind of piles up in there if you want to bring old clothes, um, accessories, shoes, whatever you've got, and pile them there. Or I can come and pick things up from you if you are not going to go to the church before August 24th. That's a Saturday, and that will be from 10 to 2 here in Hand Hall. And also, so, you know, have a shop, too. It's, um, so for those who have never experienced a queer clothing exchange, what it means is that we organize clothes strictly by size, not by gender. So we are not saying this thing is a girl thing, this thing is a boy thing, it's just here's all the smalls, here's all the mediums, here's all the larges. Uh, check out Friday's e blast. This was a good one this week. If you haven't looked at it yet, Wendy. Um, <laughs> <they're> <laughs> she's getting good to us. Uh, Friday's e blast had information about a new nine session online creation care curriculum that looks really interesting. It's uh, video based, so it's not a lot of reading, it's just uh, videos. And then also in the e blast, there was a short version about our transition to the Episcopal Diocese of the Great Lakes and the merger of the Eastern and Western Diocese. Um, let's see. Bobby Chip, uh, it, can Carol Vaughn hear us in the kitchen? No? I believe the speakers uh, are on, but they, I'm not sure if they're listening to us. They do, but I hear them in the hand hall, but I don't know if they're in the kitchen. Okay, Carol Vaughn, can you hear us? <laughs> Carol Vaughn left us for a month, and we I greatly appreciate everybody who did coffee hour in Carol's absence. Carol, do you know how much we miss you? <laughs> oh my God. And we have never thanked Carol. So Carol Vaughn, thank you for being our coffee hour lady week after week. Thank you. So Carol, no more vacations ever. <laughs> Are there any other announcements this morning? Yes. Joy, you want to come up here? I do. making this announcement um, to share this great news and especially with people that may be visitors for us for the first time. Uh, there is a ministry called the Order of Necratius West Michigan. We are a group of hunters and fishers that take um, additional protein and distribute it to people that are hungry. We had a fishing tournament this past weekend in Holland. It's called the Big Red Classic. Over two days, we collected nearly 1,500 pounds processed weight of fish. 814 pounds of that stayed in Holland at the Community Action House, which is very similar to bacon, only it's on a larger scale. They also offer a volunteer each day and their refrigerated truck. The remainder uh, came back to Benson County, and uh, that will be going to Benson Area Christian Neighbors. Last year, we gifted them with 711 pounds. This weight is about uh, 500 pounds that they will be receiving sometime this week. So I just wanted to share that good news um, and let you know we have volunteers of all ages. Our youngest volunteer yesterday was six years old, and he actually was helpful. <laughs> um, I also wanted uh, to give a shout out to a couple of people uh, without whom this event would not have been possible. Uh, first is my beloved Tim Foster, who supports me in all my crazy uh, things that I do, and my collaborator in crime and friend Alex uh, Fergus, who is a wonderful fisher and a great processor. So we will be at the Benzie Fishing Frenzy at the end of the month for three days, so if anyone's interested, let me know. Thank you. Anything else on uh, announcements? All right, I have saved the best for last. Yay. Today's Terry Conroy's birthday. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to sing Happy Birthday Larry. You want to fire it up? No, sure. <laughs> <laughs>
down bread on Israel's wandering people. Lead us to the food that never leaves us craving, addicted to consuming, but fills our poor humanity with life enough for all. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the wife of Uriah heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord, and the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have given as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, for you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will raise up trouble against you from within your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes, and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this very son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me with reading the psalm responsibly by the whole verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and none for is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your powerful spirit. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. 
I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. <coughs> Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. <clears throat> But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament which is which, which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw a sign, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, 
Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. life-changing things, sometimes we need to hear the words from someone else before our minds and hearts are able to consider that thing fully. I'm reminded of some friends of mine who speak poorly about themselves, something that psychology now calls negative self-talk. <laughs> I have this trick when I'm speaking with them where I repeat those words that they've said about themselves, but I make me the target of them rather than them. Those same friends inevitably rise to my defense and want me not to speak that way about myself. They can hear the problem when the perspective is shifted, but not when they're in the midst of it. When I'm not hoping to be trite here, these rebuttals of negative self-talk I'm recalling have ranged in topic from the unimportant to the life threat. This is serious stuff. In today's Old Testament reading, we encounter the second part of the story of King David's evil deeds surrounding lust, abuse of power, scheming to cover his actions up, that scheme failing, and then finally a successful conspiracy to commit murder. In the way I just described it, you might get the idea that he should have known better. <laughs> and maybe, even, he does know that those things are sinful and deeply evil. Yet in the midst of them, he seems to be unable to understand that or even show remorse. From the inside, from his own perspective, this mighty king cannot see right versus wrong. He acts in ways that he thinks fits his situation, and that maybe he thinks he can get away with it. It takes the prophet Nathan, spelling it out for him in a fictional story, for David to realize exactly what he's done. It takes that other person's perspective to uncloud David's eyes. David's sense of what's right and wrong is almost reflexive inside of him. When he hears this story that Nathan is speaking, he reacts. If it were someone else, he would demand restitution or even retribution for the kind of evil 
he himself has done. One of the most painful realities of being a human is that we are limited to the capacity of our own body. We can't run faster, jump higher, lift more, or think more deeply than our bodies allow us to. That's one of those great appeals of those superhero movies that are so popular nowadays. They don't seem to share in those limits. Yet here, in the real world, there are neither superheroes nor magic. The limits of having a physical body still apply. A not insignificant part of that is how our brain senses the world around us, and then our consciousness, our mind, perceives what our body has sensed. We can become blind to changes that are happening literally in front of us, obvious changes as long as they happen slowly enough, or we've been told to concentrate on something, our mind will literally edit the rest out. An action we would never allow others to commit around us, we might do on a whim. Impulse can beat out considered action time and time again. Even where our eyes wander when seeing a new person happens before we can think about it for the first three to five seconds. Not to mention the ways we act that are arbitrary or our habits that we've adopted without consideration. All of these are part of what it means to be a human. But there is another thing, another piece of the puzzle about being what we are, our community. It's not just David who gives himself a pass for actions that he wouldn't accept from the people around him. We do it too. The way we talk about our enemies the people on the other side of politics from us, or those we think who aren't doing enough to make the world a better place. It can be easy to treat others with cruelty that we might only see as the next step in a normal pattern of action. We can fall into habits that are neither loving nor good, even as we try to be loving and good from day to day. This is why it's vital that a Christian live their life as a part of a community. No matter how pure our intentions or how clear our goals, the impact we have from actions we choose might not always be visible to us. And when someone else says that through the lens of Christ-like love, what they see they can bring it to us so that our eyes are open the same way that David's are. No one who is a believer in Jesus wants to be that man. Some people who are believers in Jesus are that man, just like David. This is a hard lesson, but it's one we need to be reminded of, perhaps now more than ever in the history of our country. God's anointed king did evil. It takes love and community to declare what's right. And as St. Philip's, we have what we need to help each other be the people we want to be, the people God wants us to be, in love as one.
Now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, our Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. The God of God made, of the one being with the Father, who through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, the beginning down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> We pray for the flourishing of God's gifts to the church. Bless the leaders of your church, that they may be firm in faith and humble before you, and work together in the service of your Son, Jesus Christ, Jesus, Lord of your church. In your mercy, hear us. Bless those who teach, that they may increase our understanding and be open to your word for them. Jesus, Lord of your church. In your mercy, hear us. Bless those who minister healing, that they may bring wholeness to others, yet know your healing in themselves. Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those through whom you speak, that they may proclaim your word in power, yet open their ears to your gentle whisper. Jesus, Lord of your Church, in your mercy, hear us. Bless those who work in your world today, that in the complexity of their daily lives they may live for you, fulfill your purposes, and seek your kingdom first. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who are uncertain of their gifts and those who are powerless in this world's eyes, that they may be made strong in your gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, Lord of the church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Blanche, Suzanne, Dawn, Susan, Shannon, Bishop Curry, Sharon, Joey, Kristen, Joe, Joan, Joan, Chandler, and Jen, that they may have comfort and strength for renewal. Jesus, Lord of your church, in your mercy, you hear us. Bless all our partners in mission, that they may have your love and grace as their inspiration. 
Jesus, Lord of the Church, in your mercy hear us. Bless all who have died, that with them we may praise you on earth and in heaven. Jesus, Lord of your Church, in your mercy hear us. Bless those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Terry Conroy, Wendy Nadine, and Lynn Reed. Jesus, Lord of your Church, in your mercy hear us. Please offer your prayers and petitions either in your hearts or with your lips. And also, Tom and John. Lord of all, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, or by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friend, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share this. Jesus, 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 Jesus,